All right, well, <laughs> we'll get started, and if anyone wants to join us, feel free. Um, good morning. We are here to talk about social media and your career, or how to update your status and not get fired. Um, really quickly, who we are. I'm Chris Unger. I'm at Chick Chris. I'm a program officer with the World Affairs Council of Pittsburgh. I'm Christina Morgan. Um, I'm actually president of 85 Brows, which we're all members of here today. Um, I'm also a senior business development manager at Songwell, which is a tech startup over in Lawrenceville. I'm Alice Alia. Um, I'm a market analyst at Asian Metal, which is um, an online publication that covers trends in the uh, metal commodities. And my name is Katie Boyko. I am the online marketing specialist for Tower Care Technologies. We develop software and innovative fundraising development techniques for nonprofits. But you can find me at KDV PGH on Twitter. Okay, um, for those of you that are joining us, feel free to come on in and grab a seat where you can find one. I'm sure people won't mind having a seat later. Get to know your podcast, <laughs> new podcast friends. Um, okay, so we're hoping that this will be interesting and fun for everyone, especially since the lights are a little low. It's early on a Saturday morning. We don't want you falling asleep on us. Um, but first, I sort of want to know why are you here? Does anyone want to share? What are you hoping to get out of the session? What did you think when you saw the title? Anyone? Volunteers? Perfect, yes. I actually work with a lot of college and high school students, and they're asking me a lot of questions about how to utilize social media for job searching. So I'm going to get some tips I can share with them. Outstanding. Yes. I teach high school, and uh, high schools are notoriously uh, anti social media. So I'm hoping some of the things I can pick up, I can take back and show how. It could benefit all of us. Excellent. Great. Yes. Well, I work um, at a school and I handle their social media, so, but I'm also very active on social media. So it's sort of like, you know, you don't have your personal life and your private life aren't separate anymore. It's all out there now. So it's kind of like, how do I stay, you know, active and interesting without, like, completely screwing myself? <laughs> <laughs> um, anyone else? Okay. Hopefully, we'll be able to cover all of those things and much, much more. Yeah, um, just one thing to note really quick. Oh, I was going to uh, oh, go just back. tell everyone, too. We all put our personal handles up there, but also we, all four of us, manage tw a Twitter and Facebook account for our company or organization. So we put both here. Just if you want to, you know, kind of check out the difference in what we're doing, um, personal versus, you know, what you might do for our company. Yes. Um, so today we've broken this down into a couple of different sections. Uh, we're going to look at social media first as a professional resource, second as a promotional networking tool, um, third as a career or part of your job, like Christina just said, we all tweet personally, but then also for our, for our jobs. And um, social media is a really great way to get yourself fired, and so hopefully we'll teach you some ways to avoid doing that. And we're going to try and do all that in 45 minutes or less. Um, and yeah, you're not getting your money back, the IP sponsor, sir. Oh, okay. <laughs> So without further ado, we're going to start with Katie, who's going to talk about um, social media as a professional resource. So I'm going to stand because it's oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so I social media to me is very interesting in the way it's evolved in the past seven or so years. Uh, I went to college in a time where face. I remember introducing Facebook to my mother. And I said to her, it's really neat how you can connect with friends and it's over the internet, like you don't have to see them. She, she said, she was ridiculous. But I made my own career path in college by being an early adapter and catching on to Twitter in its early stages. And uh, it's been interesting to see how it can develop your career interest. And I've really enjoyed it the past five or six years. Um, if anyone has seen this website, googlepleasehire.me, go to it. Write it down, go there. It's hilarious, and he's genius. This boy is 25, and he has this dream job of working as a market, like a brand manager or a <coughs> marketing specialist at Google. He made this awesome website, clearly mimicking Google+, but his YouTube, the videos that he's made, this persona that he developed, awesome. And in the end, after only a month of having this campaign, earlier this summer, he has 16,000 followers on Twitter, he has 15,000 likes on Facebook, 
he got 30 job interviews at, including Google, but then several other tech companies, and got even you know about 15 job offers, not at Google, but he made his way, and he's pretty happy with where he is. But he's worth checking out. But it's interesting how he used social media as a resource in his career. Number one thing, it's no secret, LinkedIn. We're all on LinkedIn, but how are you using it as a professional networking tool, but more so now as for groups, for connections. Uh, they have causes and volunteerism, which is something that I'm pretty interested in. They're developing all the time, especially since their IPO earlier this, this summer. And the, even for anybody who's afraid of putting themselves out there too much on social media, LinkedIn is goldmine for anybody, you know, for professional networking. Um, the one point of interest with LinkedIn is it's searchable. So you can optimize it with strategies like you would uh, optimize your website through search engine optimization. Put in the keywords, uh, put proper links through. Do a little Google search. You'll find how you can optimize your LinkedIn profile. So say if you want to be especially if you want to specialize in sports marketing, you can be in the top 10 or so uh, search results. I also want to bring up meetup.com. I don't know if anyone's utilized meetup.com in this space, but a lot of people do for tech purposes. You can get a meetup for anything under the sun. Um, I'm particularly interested in SEO, but you can, for wine, craft beer, craft beer is a pretty sweet meetup scene. Uh, there's a bunch out there, but it's worth, it's worth checking out. About.me, really neat resource. For people who have several accounts and they have get kind of, they're on Twitter, they're on Facebook, but they're on Vimeo and uh, Tumblr, you can make this site and pretty much list any account that you have. So you can just put it on your Twitter, as it is that, that's your website, and you can connect on several different platforms. Um, I really love LinkedIn. Let me just like emphasize that again for your job search. I'm just, you know, when you're talking about social media for um, for networking and for con continued professional development, again, the forums, the groups. I'm really fascinated with the way that you can meet people and be introduced and find positions and um, kind of start that job process through LinkedIn. Who has Hootsuite or TweetDeck? People are utilizing that. Um, we all manage a personal and a professional account. And this, the last thing, we're gonna get into this later, but the last thing you wanna do is accidentally tweet something that you meant to be your personal and it goes <laughs> into your business. I have done it and it's really embarrassing. Luckily I caught it and I deleted it right away. I don't have a high profile account like Target would or Ford, but I've done it and it's, it's nerve wracking, but uh, I use Hootsuite and it's really changed my world. But aside from keeping things straight and organized, the streams are pretty essential for me. So I'm interested, I'm pretty into financial budgeting and I'm interested in social media. I'm in the nonprofit sector. So I keep these things, these streams, in, kind of organized in my work world. So I know what's going on, this helps me in my blogging purposes, it's helped me in how I do my marketing work. And I'm gonna hand it off to Alex. All right, so social media as a promotional or networking tool. Um, probably the most obvious and most utilized function for social media, it's in social networking, it's you know, the big, the big thing. Um, and promotion, you know, everybody's in there to get a buck, everybody's jumping on the bandwagon to get their name out there, make money, whatever. Um, promotion. Now, promotion doesn't necessarily mean promotion for your business, it also means promotion for yourself. Um, you know, as Christina's going to talk about, you have your own brand, um, as well as, you know, whatever company or, you know, persona thing that you're trying to put out there. Um, <laughs> As far as promotion, um, you know, Facebook ads, business pages, groups, you can do, um, 
you know, groups for, for people, um, if you're trying to, you know, create your own personal, you know, if you're a freelancer, you want people to follow whatever work you're doing, um, create that. Um, and then obviously, you know, um, Twitter accounts <coughs> for, um, you know, your brand or your store, um, separating the business account from the, the, the personal account, you know, and tweeting things specifically for those two different accounts. You know, how you tweet personally um, is going to be completely different from whatever, you know, if you have a cool t-shirt company, you're going to tweet something completely different for that. Um, and then LinkedIn, um, like Katie said, the groups, um, message boards, um, you need to get out there and put yourself as, as a, uh, you know, make a presence for yourself um, and, and make sure you get your name out there. And as I'll talk about later, maintain a presence. You can't just, you know, throw your name out there and hope that people are going to start following you. <laughs> Um, networking doesn't necessarily mean social networking. Obviously, everyone wants to, you know, make more friends, and we all get random friend requests and follows from people we don't know. But, um, you know, you can also network for your job. Um, you know, as far as uh, Twitter goes, I personally um, use Twitter as a way to find a job, uh, well, promote myself to help find a job um, by following accounts that. Uh, you know, pertain to whatever field I want to get into. Or, you know, as far as um, networking for your company, you can um, follow, like, for my Asian Metal account, I follow different, uh, you know, mining companies, different investor relation groups, things like that, to kind of meet people through whatever sort of uh, niche you're, you're going through. Um, interact with, with other accounts. Um, you know, reach out to someone who you may not know. If you're into writing or, you know, the tech stuff, I don't know, follow someone or reach out to them and say, hey, I really like this cool thing you wrote about or, you know, that design you had in the newspaper was really awesome. Like, I'd like to learn more about it. Um, you never know when somebody will reply back. Um, retweeting and mentioning other people I found is a really good way to get people to pay attention to you because they see, oh, this person is interested in what I'm saying. And then, um, you know, in the future, they, they might pay more attention to you because they know that you're actively, um, you know, looking at what they're saying. They'll start looking at what you're saying in turn to kind of get feedback. Um, follow accounts for people that align with your brand, um, both personally and professionally. Um, that kind of speaks for itself. Um, and reach out through common contacts. You know, uh, I like snooping, going through, seeing who other people are following, and then following those people. Um, you know, it, it's really helpful to try to, you know, expand your, your network, um, both professionally and, and personally. Um, and, you know, as my little gossiping birds will tell you, um, uh, you know, gossip travels probably faster and um, harder than it does in the real world, in the media world. Um, you know, if you tweet something and somebody else sees it, 15, however many other, 100 other people are going to see it too. So just be aware that, um, you know, other people are following you and looking at what you're saying. Christine, I'll talk a little bit more about, you know, appropriate things to, <laughs> to tweet about and kind of managing what it is you're talking about because you, you do have to be aware that, you know, other people are out there and they're looking at you and then you're not necessarily looking at them. And um, stay relevant. Like I said, you can't just put your name out there, create a profile, tweet a couple times, and hope that you know you have a big name because of it. You have to maintain a presence and stay relevant. Um, you know, continue tweeting, continue you know updating your page. If you don't, folks are going to think that you're just you know getting stale. <laughs> but um, in the part of your career. All right, so I think the main theme of what I'm about to talk about is one line. And I heard this a few months ago, and I just it really resonated with me, and I'm hoping that everyone here remembers it today. It's manage your brand. And that's not only your company's brand, but your personal brand. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more through some specifics, but what are you projecting out into the world through social media? I don't think that a lot of people stop to think about what they're actually putting out into the world, um, but I'm just challenging everyone after today 
you know, maybe make a buddy here um, in the room and have someone take a look and almost evaluate you and say, yeah, I don't know, I was kind of getting some negative vibes from your tweets or, you know, it sounds like you had a bad week last week, but my goodness, um, you know, I, I don't think enough people stop to really think about what they're putting out there. All right, so last week someone said to me, every job is temporary, and that's true. Um, you could work somewhere for six months, you could work somewhere for 10 years, but the goal is now with social media that you have to be aware of what you're doing because at any moment in this job economy, you could be replaced. Um, you know, this seems like common sense, but companies are really starting to crack down on social media. Um, you may have policies where you work. Um, I work at a startup, so we have no policies. Um, you know, there's all kinds of things happening, and we're actually managing a lot of social media now for companies in the area. Um, companies are scared. They're a little bit ignorant. They can't keep up with social media trends. They're fearful. Um, they don't want internal company matters being blasted out to the public because they have no control over what might be said. There's also a lot of legal risk involved. Um, so I just encourage everyone to take a look at oh, company policies. Um, you know, get together with your manager or your HR department. I, I, has anyone done this yet at your office? Just kind of look through policies that might exist. Yeah? I wrote policy. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Yeah, and a lot more people have them. So, um, you know, just make sure that you're in line with what the company is asking of you. Um, we'll show some examples of people that didn't and um, actually lost their jobs from it. But like I said before, what does your brand like? This is kind of the theme of what I'm going to talk about. Um, you need to be able to manage your company's brand if you're in charge of social media, but also your personal brand and constantly stay in line with your goals. Um, social media too can be a great PR tool. So it's not only a PR tool for your company's handles on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn, but use your own name to you know, let your friends know what's going on with your company. Um, they're always gonna be happy with you when you do stuff like that. How many people have Googled their own name? Probably everyone. <laughs> so what comes up when you Google your own name? I want everyone to do this too after the weekend. Look at what comes up. Some of it might be good, some of it might be bad. This is the time to kind of harness in what you're putting out there and try to control what's on the internet about you. Because more often than not when you're applying for a job or you all might Google my name after today, I don't know. Like I want to control what people are seeing. So it's just something to think about. Um, same goes for the company you're working for um, or school. Um, you know, if you're in charge of social media and marketing and PR, just take a look once a week. Set Google alerts. Um, Google alerts are great to follow. You know what people are saying about your company. We do this at Sunwell, and we get alerts all the time. We don't even realize sometimes that people are talking about us. Manage your online reputation. I think you guys are kind of getting the point by now. Um, but I did write a quote on here from the book Social Nomics. I don't know if anyone else has read it. But they say, what happens in Vegas stays on YouTube. So be careful out there. All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just look at this. This is my Facebook friend, Adam. <laughs> and I just, you know, wanted to bring an example of someone that isn't managing their brand so well. <laughs> Adam is a hedge fund manager in New York. <laughs> He's got a great job. He's making a lot of money, doing really well. Um, He's just not really managing his brand very well. Now, I don't know if his pictures are public or private. I actually didn't look. I saw this last weekend, though, and thought it would be a great example. Um, I mean, if you were this person's employer, what do you think? 
probably not the best thing to be putting out into the universe, right? Um, so even with students, you know, if you're helping students try to find jobs, just kind of, you know, getting all these party pictures. Like, listen, have fun. Like, if you have a bad day, then, you know, these things happen, but just watch what you're putting out into the public, <laughs> please. <laughs> if I see any more pictures like this, I think some people might get deleted. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so personal branding. Um, just establish your identity before getting online. If you're already online, just kind of reassess and maybe make some goals for yourself. Um, always be consistent with your voice. You know, when you start to jump all over the place, um, I think people get a little bit confused about what you're trying to establish. Um, and basically, they just can't really understand what your brand is exactly. As Alex said, stay consistent and relevant, and listen to people around you and engage in meaningful conversations. And last but not least, just ask yourself, do I want this connected with my name? And does everyone need to hear about my bad day? Um, I'm guilty of this as well. You know, even if you're like, oh, like I, I hate my clients, or oh, like no, I've never written that. But you know, <laughs> say you want to update, you know, something, and you're putting something negative out there. Just ask yourself if you really need to do it, or wait six seconds or so before you hit update. Um, even if you do update, I've done this where I'm like, oh man, I really shouldn't have done that. You know, I shouldn't have expressed that I was having a bad day. Just go back and delete it an hour later. Sometimes you need to get it out, but make sure it's not a permanent, you know, tweet on your feed. Um, just be careful and stay positive. Um, I think that, you know, people like to hear positive a lot more than negative. That's All right. Chris. Um, this is what I think of the fun part as like the fun, the funnest, funnest part. Um, <laughs> how to not get fired. It's why you're all here. I know. Okay, um, an analogy. Social media is like a car. Hear me out on this one. It's a useful tool, a car. It gets you to where you need to be. Can be a lot of fun, go out for a drive on a weekend, maybe not with gas prices at the moment, but you know, cars are fun, cars are useful. Um, social media is the same way. Driving a car can also be very dangerous. Social media is the same way. Um, you make one little mistake, you veer six inches to the left or the right, and your car is totaled, you end up in the hospital. Social media will probably not, hopefully not, land you in the hospital, but it can kind of trash, wreck, crash your career. Um, you have to pay attention 100% of the time, just like when you're driving. So I'm a big fan of lists, so I've made you a list. Um, five things that will get you fired, and if not fired, it will probably at least earn you a really uncomfortable meeting with your boss. Um, so number one, make an inappropriate comment about your employer or your boss, your coworker, client, in a public forum. And I say public, even if it's locked down, we'll, we'll still consider Facebook, Twitter, blogs public. Um, if you do that, you're probably going to get in trouble. For example, this young lady on Facebook, um, oh my god, she hates her job, her boss is a total pervy wanker, always making her do shit. Are there kids in here? Okay. <laughs> this board does have some R-rated language. Um, always making her do shit stuff just to piss her off, wanker. Um, apparently she had forgotten that she added her boss on Facebook and he didn't see this update. Um, so he said, I guess you forgot you were adding me on here. Um, firstly, don't flatter yourself, I'm gay. Second of all, um, that shit stuff is actually your job and that's what you're paid to do. Um, but since you can't do that, uh, that might contribute to how you feel about it. Basically, don't bother coming in ever again. Pick up your stuff. Yes, I'm serious. So she got fired for a complaint on Facebook. That's probably an extreme example, but it also, based on the Google searches I made, happens more often than you might think. <laughs> so making inappropriate comments about boss, coworker, someone like that, can get you in trouble. Also, playing hooky. When I did my Google searching, looking for images for this presentation, you'd be astounded at the number of tweets that are publicly out there. Told my boss I was sick today. Go into the amusement park. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so just watch what you're putting out there when it when it involves your job on the line. <laughs> number two, we talked touched on this earlier. Mixing up your personal and professional accounts. I know we've all, I think we've all done it, probably at least once. 
How many of you have done it? Be honest, we won't tell. Yeah. So you can go back and you can delete the tweet. But if you don't catch it in time, there can be screenshots. It's cached somewhere. The Library of Congress is now keeping tweets on hand. So you want to be very, very careful. For example, um, did anyone catch this this Chrysler Autos one a few months ago? Uh, yeah. So this this was a, <laughs> this was actually a social media firm hired by Chrysler um, to manage their social media presence. Uh, the employee there was obviously pretty pissed off that he was stuck in traffic, <laughs> and he tweeted this, meaning to tweet from his personal account, and it ended up going out on Chrysler's account. He deleted the tweet right away. But obviously, it's out there for the internet to Google search, find, and laugh at. Um, <laughs> so he finds it ironic that Detroit is known as Motor City, and no one here knows how to uh, to fucking drive. So <laughs> that's a prime example of mixing. That's probably the worst case scenario: mixing up your um, your two accounts. And he did get fired. <laughs> Number three: post irresponsibly. And we're going to include, but not limit that to. I have my little list here: inappropriate photos and videos. Um, like Christina's Facebook friend, Adam, probably I would consider that an irresponsible post. Um, bragging about any Ill illegal or immoral activities, um, making racist, sexist, any sort of ist comments. <laughs> um, and job hunting. And that one doesn't really fit in, but we'll get to it in a second. So here are three examples of people who did lose their jobs um, because they posted irresponsibly. <laughs> <laughs> This gentleman on the left, um, some of you may remember that Domino's had a big scandal with a YouTube video that ended up. Um, a few of the employees were goofing around. He's actually sticking a piece of mozzarella cheese in his nose and then puts it on the pizza. Um, so this video of them goofing around, making the pizzas, doing terrible things to the pizzas, ended up on YouTube. Domino's found out. The employees got fired. Criminal charges are pending. Um, it did not bode well for them. So that's an example of posting an irresponsible video. They also uh, needed a very long time to respond to it. Yes, and that was Which the other was their big problem. Other fault. Sorry. Was, yeah, no, that's exactly right. They, Domino sat on it for a really long time, so it blew probably way further out of proportion. Um, a good example of responding is um, the Red Cross. I don't know if anyone saw what happened with the Red Cross. Mm -hmm. One of their employees mixed up the accounts and tweeted about getting slizzard, something about <laughs> lots of beer. <laughs> um, within an hour, the Red Cross had deleted the tweet and said that the rogue tweet had been deleted, um, the keys had been confiscated, everyone was fine. <laughs> so they handled it in a humorous, quick way, which was outstanding. Um, Anthony Weir, even if you think you're DMing someone something, be careful. <laughs> 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 uh, was the spokesperson for Affleck. He was the duck that said Affleck. That's all he did. Oh, I made a lot of money doing it. Um, right after the tsunami in Japan, he tweeted this tweet at the bottom. Um, just split up with my girlfriend, but like the Japanese say, there will be another one floating by any minute. Completely insensitive. Affleck was not pleased. They asked him as their spokesperson. So, posting irresponsibly, whether it is trying to send private pictures and failing, posting irresponsible videos, can all get you fired. And to the job hunting piece. This young lady, it's a lady, um, was offered a job by Cisco. And she tweeted about it and said that she had to weigh the utility of a fatty paycheck against the daily commute to San Jose and hating the work. <laughs> well, her account was public. <laughs> Cisco obviously does a pretty good job of monitoring, uh, monitoring their social media mentions because they quickly responded that uh, the hiring manager would love to know that you hate the work and the hiring manager was informed and she ended up not getting the job after all. So if you're going on interviews, if you're currently employed, if you are a student and you're going on interviews, if you're job hunting and you don't want your boss to know, keep all of that off of social media. It's probably going to bode well for you in the end. Number four, neglect your privacy settings. A helpful Venn diagram to explain <laughs> <laughs> the internet and privacy. Uh, not, not any overlap there. So this should be pretty obvious, and you would think that everyone would know, hey, if it's public, it's public, anyone can access it. But people seem to be struggling with it, as we've seen in our examples um, that have gone past. So check your privacy settings. Even if everything seems to be the same, double check. Facebook is notorious for just 
switching things up and then all of a sudden your privacy settings have changed, especially now that they're trying to be like Google Plus, they're changing everything around again. Um, remember that even if you have everything locked down and it's like Fort Knox, your social media, nobody can even see it. I don't know why you do it. No, but nobody can see it. It can still be seen. I mean, it takes one person to retweet a private locked account. You're like, my boss smells like dingleberries. Somebody like, no, that's hilarious. Retweets it, and suddenly that's out there with your name attached to it. And although Twitter's not letting you retweet a private account, a copy and paste is all it takes. A lot of the um, the different apps that do it will let you retweet the original style. So people can still retweet your tweets. So just keep that in mind when you're putting it out. It may not just be to a close circle of friends. Um, also consider where you're updating from. Uh, if anyone has a company, Blackberry, iPhone, something like that, that's company property. So just just kind of always keep in the back of your head, hey, I wonder if my boss can see what I'm doing right now. <laughs> Number five, spending too much time on whatever your favorite social media site is. Um, that can definitely get you fired or get you an awkward, awkward meeting. Um, this person didn't get in trouble, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> poor heart can't take much So um, it can be very easy to get sucked into the sites. Um, you know, you're like, oh, I'm just going to log on to Facebook for 30 seconds, quick status update, having a great day, eating grilled cheese. And then <laughs> before you know it, three hours have passed, and you are on your ex-boyfriend's, new girlfriend's, husband's, cousin's, dog's, like, Facebook page. <laughs> oh, puppy pictures. Um, and then all of a sudden, you're like, oh, deadline. OK, so just, just to keep that in mind. Another few additional things to keep in mind, much like Christina said, think about before you update. Take a pause. Um, something that someone once said to me that sort of stuck with me is, how would you feel about if your post ended up in the newspaper? What if it ended up on the 6 o'clock news? I can just see now. Chick Chris tweeted that she thinks boys in kilts are cute. <laughs> I did tweet that the other day, by the way. Um, <laughs> what if your grandmother saw it? And I'm assuming that you have like a normal sweet grandmother, not like the kind of goes skydiving and parties and drinks a lot and has a ton of beer. So just things to consider. Who might see this? If it goes public, am I going to be completely mortified? Am I going to lose my job? Um, like was said before, consider your entire online presence. And that includes YouTube, Flickr, Facebook, blog comments. A lot of people just think, oh, I'm not posting it on my page. But what if somebody searches your blog name and finds the comments that you posted, man, that chick is sexy. Yeah, no, like, that's going to make you look inappropriate. Just something to keep in mind. Um, don't just live in the now. I don't know if we have any students in here who are maybe currently not employed, but going to be looking for a job in a few years. The internet is forever forever. It will always be out there somewhere. So even if you're not where you need to be right now, even if you're like, eh, I work at McDonald's, I don't really care, it's just for fun, maybe three years down the, the line you're applying for a job and somebody Googles you and something comes up. Do you want that to show that you're responsible or do you want it to be a picture of you partying with clothes? <laughs> anyway, so just make sure that what you're doing is trying to advance your goal. Look at your five-year plan. And then finally, with all of that said, Stop worrying so much. <laughs> There's only so much you can do. And just like with driving, going back to my car analogy, even if you are 100% perfect 100% of the time, somebody could run a red light and smash into you. Somebody could totally trash your career, and you could have done everything right. So keep it in the back of your mind, but don't obsess about it. Don't become one of those people who, every time you log on to a computer, you're completely paranoid. So don't worry too much drive safely. <laughs> and so now, and this actually worked out perfectly, we're hoping to leave about 10 minutes for sort of an open discussion if there are professional resources that you want to share that you've been using. So this is the time when you get to stop sitting silently and participate. Aren't you excited? <laughs> Who's excited? Yay! <laughs> okay, you have, yes. you have something. Um, I just wanted to kind of mention uh, the job search thing. I did post my resume on my Facebook page when I was looking for a job, and I blocked all of my coworkers I was friends with. Although the ones I was friends with on Facebook already kind of knew I wasn't happy anyway and knew to be discreet, but you, you know, sometimes you can kind of work around and 
if you need your other people in your network to know that you are looking, because it's like you do have to balance like, I'm not letting my boss know, it's letting the people in my network know. So I chose Facebook because I keep my privacy settings pretty set, but I didn't post it out on like <coughs> Twitter and you know, like, hey, hate my job, somebody help me. Great, that's, that was good. That it worked out. Can you mention this, but LinkedIn's a great place for mm -hmm. your resume too. There's a lot of recruiters on there. Um, I've been contacted randomly just by recruiters yeah. and people. Um, I, I didn't to know update my Twitter or my LinkedIn account, and it worked out because I did the traditional applying for a job. But I knew someone that my now boss was connected with and asked her to introduce me through LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah. So it did end up being a social media expert, and I say that lightly. Um, it helped just show, like, I know how to do stuff. And if you see a job posting, let's say, I don't know, on Monster, and you're like, wow, this sounds like a great position. Go on LinkedIn then and see if any of your connections know someone in that company. Um, it's a great way to send your resume through Monster, but then also maybe send it, you know, behind the scenes too. Um, if someone blocks a resume in, you know, it's you're probably going to go to the top of the pile. And on that same note. You can also do a little bit of LinkedIn stalking and find the right person to get that resume to. Even if you don't have that network, you can find the HR director or whomever it may be. Um, but LinkedIn's really great for getting that, that connection. It will also tell you if the job is posted. It'll tell you who posted that job, and it's most likely the person who's in charge of you know hiring or getting your name out there. So that's you can also like you know message them to ask more or something. And the other thing I like about LinkedIn is you can post your resume on there and it's not suspicious. Yeah. So you're just supposed to do one yeah. LinkedIn. So if you start building that LinkedIn network, people are like, oh, like, I'm just building my, you know, my connection. Yes. Uh, I use Facebook quite a bit. I have a number of events pages, company pages. I'm still a little, a little intimidated. I don't understand Twitter. Could you give me the best way to start on Twitter? Um, something that I did personally um, for start before I started our our, um, our organization's Twitter, but I set up a personal account um, and played around with it for a couple of weeks to get a feel for it. What did you do? Um, I signed up for an account, and uh, it, Twitter is really nice about it. And it pops up with a who to follow section. Yeah. Um, so I, I recognized a couple of names from journalists, the White House, and things that I was generally interested in. Um, started following them. Most of the websites you go to now, um, Target, for example, they, they've got their little social media icon. You can click, it takes it right to the Twitter page, and you can click follow. Um, so it made it really easy to just start building a following. And then um, I shared with my friends, I was talking to them, oh, are you on Twitter? So I added them. Um, and then I could start to see how people interacted on Twitter. Uh, so I sort of sat back and watched for a little while before kind of jumping in head, head first, feet first. Um, there's a lot of really great blog articles if you if you just Google how to get started on Twitter and they kind of give you a little glossary of the term. What does that at symbol before someone's name mean? What's an RT? Um, and things like that. So after, it was for me at least, after a couple of days I was starting to feel comfortable with it. Um, but I was glad that I did it on my personal account because I made a couple of mistakes. And that way it wasn't happening on the organization's account. So by the time I got there, I was sort of a pro. But anyone else have some thoughts on that? Uh, no thoughts. Any other thoughts on how to get started I, on Twitter? I see I one in the back. Oh, uh, there's actually, there's a website called Hey Mom, This Is How Twitter Works. <laughs> <laughs> it's not exactly like that, but if you Google it, um, it actually explains to like ads, retweets, replies, direct messages, and how to get started on Twitter. It's really, really basic. It does say at the top, it's not just for moms. Yeah. <laughs> There's also a session, is that today or tomorrow, on social media, like 101. I think that's what I yeah, yeah, right now. But social media 201 is in room C right yeah. after this. But when they post them online, you'll be able to catch them online later. Um, it's the things that get me. Like, I'm, I'm a wellness educator. Mm -hmm. So I would like to connect with all the tweeter wellness educators. Mm -hmm. Can I do that? Like, I can. Mm -hmm. I, 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 yeah, I was just going to say, um, go ahead and, and put in search bar whatever term you might I'm be looking for, you know, diabetes or mm -hmm. health or wellness or whatever it might be, and then you'll see everybody that's talking about it, you'll see the people who have uh, Twitter handles with okay. those things in it, yeah. so that's 
just watch that stream and we'll figure out who's who's who. Yeah, I'm an engineer and uh, like I like to see like what the like new cutting edge tech is. Right, right. So I'll just search for like Bayer, ED, uh, EPG, all those different companies, and they'll post about like different things that uh, they're getting into. Yeah, it's really easy when you just uh, And they search. do it with just a few words. Yep. Yeah, yeah, just link to an article, and then you get like the press release. And then you can also find people that are interested in see who they're retweeting and then start following them and then look and see who they follow because if you find them interesting, probably who they follow will be interested in you. And that's how we grow the network. Well, <laughs> is there any way to prioritize who you're following? Because after a while, like, you've got 200, 2,000, 10,000 people you're following. And it's just noise after a while when somebody's updating, yeah, I just had a bloody center today. I don't care. I mean, like, but then there's somebody else who's really important to you. How, is, I don't know whether you can sort, okay, if these 15 people are people that I really want to know about, and the others, maybe if I get around to it. Uh, on Twitter, you can create lists and add people to a certain list. That way, when you log in, you can click on the list, and it will show you only those people. Um, actually, this week, Facebook changed again, and they're creating friend lists. Um, so Facebook is actually going to be very similar now, where you could make a group of close friends, and then maybe have your acquaintances and everything else. But if you only want to see what's happening with your close friends, it's an easy way to see it quickly without having to scroll through everything else. Yeah, go on Google Plus, those is already set up like their circle is circle of friends, circle of family, and you can actually only see their stream if you like. I don't want to see everybody's stream. All I want to see are my friends' stream, or I don't want to see my family stream, or I don't want to see my equipment stream. So they even broke their stream down for you not to have to see them. And if you use Sally your tweet, or tweet deck, you can set up columns for your lists. So then you can have one column for everybody, and then I have like my Pittsburgh called Pittsburgh Peeps, so those are all my local people, and then I have like online like communications lists, so you can call them, do columns to your different interests, and then it, it pulls them together for you. So Facebook is degree more like Twitter. What's the benefit of having both? You know, if I manage both for my organization, what would I, what would be better to put on Twitter versus Facebook, or do I put the same stuff on both? Or? I'm, really excited. I'm really excited about this answer, because yeah. I resonate with, with your question earlier. My, my mother, the same woman who five years ago <clears throat> couldn't stand the thought of Facebook, she's the director of marketing for a retirement community, and she recognized, holy cap, crap, I need to be on social media in some way. She asked me that same question a year ago, and I said, you consider Twitter your news board, your bulletin board, you announce quick, up-to-date like news pieces or what's happening. It's fast. It's always moving. It's always evolving. You consider Facebook to be your relationship development tool almost. Like you can, it's more interactive. It's more, um, I would, I'm going to go ahead and say warm, how you can post pictures, how you can explain a little bit in more detail what's going on in your life, but it's not a hourly thing. You want to do it a little bit more strategically and clear, I think. That's yeah. really good. Um, that's really helpful. Yeah. The, they are two different uh, vehicles to get your message across. They need to have the same, if you're going to do it for a business or for a brand, they need to have the same kind of feel and message, but you kind of approach it in a different manner. Well, it depends who your audience is, too. Um, my organization, uh, as far as between Facebook and LinkedIn, most of our members use LinkedIn uh, for their professional account, and that's where they want to be communicated with. And then Facebook is their personal account, so we don't touch Facebook as much. Uh, but then Twitter, we have most of our members are not on Twitter, but we have other contacts through Twitter that we that's the one thing I think that makes social media so challenging is that there's no one size fits all answer for any yeah. person or organization. So it's a little bit of figuring out who you're reaching out to and, and what ways to do it. A little trial and error sometimes. I was wondering if um, any of you guys have played with Google Plus at all and if you've used it for professional purposes and how you use it. I've used it, I've used Google Plus. I think we're all still waiting to see how it's going to affect us. Everyone can, I think we're all the same. 
Um, it's been really cool for me to follow big names. So for some reason, I think the really, the really leaders in the tech world, they've adopted to Google Plus pretty quickly. And I follow them. I don't really say much, but I really, I'm, I'm in that like observe stage. But I'm learning from them. Because they're posting some really neat photos. And they're posting like up-to-date like, updates on their projects and what they're working on. I think it's pretty fascinating. But I haven't used it yet in a professional sense. You know, the other thing, too, is that Google Plus is not on business pages for another so I think that when that shift happens, we're going to know a lot more. But right now, it's just individuals kind of looking around, checking it out. Um, I just read something yesterday, though, that said like, everyone joined, and now the use of Google Plus has just mm -hmm. gradually gone down. So I you fought so hard for an invitation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the right time to get to the <laughs> Well, for so long. All of Google Plus was talking about was Google Plus. I don't know if anyone recognized. Like, I would go on Google Plus and everyone was just talking about how what you could do or tricks about Google Plus. Yeah. All right. Well, we promised that we would end on time, and it is exactly quarter to eleven. So we're going to wrap up. We'll loiter here for a few minutes. If anyone has any other questions, yeah, just so that most of our personal yeah, uh, Twitter handles yeah. are usually private, but we open them up today. So feel free to follow us. Um, follow our company. You'll be able to sort of see a difference. If you think of any questions later today or tomorrow, just, you know, ask yeah. us. We're here to help you. Yeah. It was great seeing everybody. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thanks for coming.